they're not always far away. Opposition tends to linger closer than you think. And what we need to understand, child of God, is that sometimes on your way out and on your way up, the ones who will try to keep you back are the ones who are the closest to you. And so this text is tailored to teach us that when we are faced with opposition, we cannot afford to shrink, run, or lie down. We can't sit and be silent. I know somewhere you read that you ought to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles, but that's not the instruction of the Lord in every situation. Every now and again, New Prospect, God says, let's get ready to rumble. I feel a fight coming on. Every now and again, God says it's time to put those hands up and go to work. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but there are some times when God says enough is enough. Yeah. And so verses 9 and 10, Moses instructs Joshua to choose men, go and fight with Amalek. Now is there anybody here that gets the impression that God will not fight every battle for you, but there are some times, there are some battles he will fight through you. Yes, the Bible continues to tell us that Joshua and his men are in the valley warring with the enemy and Moses is on top of the hill and Aaron and her, some of you miss what I said, let me say it again, Moses is on top of the hill with Aaron and her. Okay, one more time. Jo the warring is happening with the enemy in the valley, and Moses is on top of the hill with Aaron and her. Okay, let me say, I'll say it this way. Joshua is spilling blood in the valley while Moses, Aaron, and her are up on the hill. Now, if I had time, if I had time, I got a video and other stuff, and I want to eat just like you do. If I had the time, I would point out that oftentimes, getting closer to God in a crisis looks like you're checking out of the fight. Pastor Lynch, on this 27th anniversary of this relationship between pastor and people, let me remind you that you will often find yourself in a place where you will face bitter criticism. Folks may not understand why you won't react to their foolishness, why you won't move, but as a leader, when they go low, you go high. Because your first duty is to go a little higher, to get into the presence of God. You are called to a different perspective to inform your perception. And I'm trying to help somebody realize that perception changes based on location. And that if you, the church, is going to experience success in the valley, your, leader, your leader will need to spend time on the mountain. Leaders will need to put in some time on the hill, getting closer to God and getting a new outlook on the battle. See, you cannot get too caught up in the opinions of people to the place where you ignore the will of God. So Moses is on the mountain. Everybody say the mountain. The battle is raging in the valley and over the course of time he gets tired and hungry to the point that his arms begin to fall. Now don't miss this. Moses is on the mountain with his hands raised and the rod, the staff in his hand. And as long as his hands are lifted, which is a sign of surrender and a posture of prayer, as long as his hands are lifted, the Bible says Israel was winning. But when his hands fell, the Amalekites prevailed. In other the success of the people was closely connected to the leader and for those of us who have been around a little while we know that no people ever rise higher than their leader now now the next dynamic of consideration that we must understand is this leaders get tired I think I just said something there are times when, when they too feel stressed, frustrated, annoyed, hot, bothered, and overworked. Can I, can I get a few leaders in here to agree with me that leading gets tired at times? So as wonderful as the leader may be, as gifted as he or she may be, as charismatic, as anointed, as personable, and as powerful, the truth is that while working with and interceding for you, leaders can become weary themselves. So Moses' hands fall, but the good news is that when they did, the text shows us that he was not alone on the mountain. There were two other leaders.
scriptures from the Bible who tell us to found themselves with a stone, one large enough for Moses to sit on, Aaron and her each held up one of his hands to 